Coming up in this week's Swarf and Chips, I'm at Oracle Precision. Now, we often talk on MTD CNC about modular work holding, but today we're going to talk to Ryan about why he believes that making his own fixtures might be just as good. Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. I want you to give us a quick 30 second overview of Oracle Precision and what you do. So Oracle Precision are, uh, well, I think a high spec uh, subcontract engineering company. We've got an uh, array of machines, lathes, live tooling, sliders, five axis machines. And we've just purchased a new horizontal. Which we're going to look at in a minute because That's this right. and Chips is about fixturing. Okay, and it's about the fact that you make a lot of your own here, don't you? Starting with this here. Can you talk us to, uh, to us about why you made this fixture and what machine this goes on and the, and the advantages to making it yourself? Yeah, so we do use some generic fixturing, but a lot of times we, we do make bespoke ourselves because we just find we can hold the parts m better or we can get more parts per pallet on, um, which leads to greater run times for us. The problem with the generic things, they're great for holding, um, you know, day-to-day, new stuff every time but a lot of our work is repeat work so we can actually gear us fixturing around the product but would something like that i mean how long would something like this take you to make oh uh, uh, that may take a guy two days to make but once we're running the, the, each each one of those pockets there's a cycle time of about 12 minutes at the moment and that current thing there it has old 60 parts okay so 60 parts now this particular fixture is one you're using on your mx330 here which That's is correct. a 10 pc machine a five axis machine in center yep and as you say the the idea is to get as many components here so you can keep this thing running overnight is it that's right so when we got uh, when we've got new work on or, or work that comes through we always look to make sure we can run the machine for a minimum of 12 hours that's that's got to be the everything because that gives us 24 hours five days a week and then we do have people coming at weekends to load up so really this machine it never stops never stops now what we're going to do throughout this show is we're going to look at them actually making fixturing uh, for the new horizontal machining center and then look at that in action which is their new matsura which they purchased so ryan let's take a walk that way and we'll go and have a look at uh, where you actually make uh, these fixtures and one that i believe uh, has just come off the machine so what have you got here and why have you gone for, let's say, five faces? Is that, is that an octagon? That... The word of the day is pentagon. A pentagon is a shape with five sides and five angles. I'm not sure what, what it's called, but the, the idea is we design it right around the product that we know we've got, um, what we make every month, and we've got year's contracts, and. It's designed to maximise the, the capacity of the H plus 300. So this particular part, we'll, we make them semi-generic. So we make the tombs and they'll have a bolt hole pattern and the dowel holes. And then we bolt plates to them what then carry, it can carry a vice, it can carry a chuck or it can carry its own bespoke work holding. So let, let, let's look at this and so I mean, you've got, how does, talk me through how you make it from start to finish then. So we make, we make the plates, which we've all designed in house. So plates are made on the base, we'll leave a bit of excess material and then they go out for welding. It all gets welded up. It come, we then send it out for the base remachining, and then we bolt it to the horizontal and final machine in situ on the horizontal, and then the plates are made on the verticals around us, and then bolted to them to carry the products that we're going to make. So you will then put the plates on top of this, will you? That's and, right, and, and they'll, they'll, be, they'll be bespoke. So, so this is trying to take an idea so that we can load different parts and with more faces and then the plates that go on will be bespoke to the product. Okay, so now this one is going to be one that you're going to be putting on your horizontal, isn't it? That's right. You've already made a few of these, so yep. let's go and take a look at um, some of these fixtures actually on the machine. Ryan, you have got quite a, a plethora of uh, machine tools here, haven't you? Quite yeah, a we've brand. got great um, support from Dawson. 
a great machine. And then when we went to five axis and horizontals, obviously we chose Matt Soda and they've never let us down. Okay, now this machine, how long, how long has this been here? Just tell us quickly. Uh, this has been here probably about seven Half weeks. Hour. Yeah, probably about seven weeks, but we had uh, an issue just getting the tombstones back from the subcontractors in time. Right. So we're just starting to gear up now. It's 15 pallets. We've got eight pallets made up at the moment. And obviously over the next few months, we'll, we'll feed it all. We'll have it all filled. Okay, now, and, and this is one that you've made here, which we've just seen in its, in its kind of raw state. Yeah. So you put the plates then on the side, you then machine them, do you, or you machine the other faces That's in right. situ to make sure it's, it's, it's precise line, and yeah. geometrically. That's right. And then um, this is an up, up two part, so you can see we get six on, but as you can see, H plus 300, it's a 300 base, but it's quite a big tomb, to be honest. But we've had to take this into consideration. It's a 250 kilo load limit. So this particular tomb has been designed with aluminium. It's out of aluminium and it's all hollow. I was going to say, you, you've got to get the weight out That's then, right. haven't you? Because, so it's, it's does fabricated that plates. Your, does that affect your clamping and, 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 and any possible vibration that might happen? Uh, when we haven't seen this at the moment and we are using 80 mil high feed tools. So we're using 40 mil porcupine tools. And at the moment, we've not seen any, any issues. Um, so the five faces here, you're not getting the full use out of the five faces here, are you? Because the part is obviously... Yeah, well, it, it is now it is designed that we will do it, but at the moment, we've because we're proving out, we've got OP1 in the machine, and this is OP2. Eventually, they'll both be OP1 and 2, and the OP1s will sit in here, and the OP2s will be here. So then the pallet then, it, it'll have roughly about a three-hour cycle time. OK, let's, ha let's have a quick look in, this, in the machine here then. Actually, I'll go this way so the camera can go inside. But perhaps you could just then explain then, Ryan, about this particular fixturing in here then. And yeah, so, so that's just um, exactly the same as the fixture we've seen before, apart from the plates uh, on the larger face. Um, and that's doing OP1, whereas they're doing OP2. So, you know, eventually that, again, will have 12... 12 pieces, six up 10s, six up 20s, and they'll come off complete off that tomb. Okay, now, so here's the question that I opened up this show with uh, this week, and it's about why you've gone down this path rather than buy yourself what is readily available from many suppliers, a tombstone, and then equip it with, so, um, you know, uh, yeah. zero point clamp or whatever it might yeah, be. So why have you selected because, this? So there's two reasons, really. What One is when you look at these systems, they're, they're quite expensive. And when you're trying to pallet, you know, when you're trying to fill 15 pallets, it, it becomes a, a mega cost. But two is, if you design your own fixturing, you can maximise the capacity that you can use per pallet. So if we'd have gone with standard tombs at, you know, four faces, two vices, we'd have got eight parts on. You know, with this way, we're getting 12 parts on. That's giving us another, you know, hour per tomb of, of runtime. And is your intention to be running this continually like yes. that? Yes. Uh, what the idea when we conceived this idea was the certain jobs that we have what are repeat every month bi-monthly um, we think we can gear all the 15 pallets up not only to if the customer needs it we can be continuous on a part 24 hours a day but also when it gets to a weekend we can load up on a Friday afternoon and the machine will still be running Monday morning when we come in and are you okay to do that on some of these harder materials that we're seeing here because yes yeah, we we're, the material. Obviously, the things that can be affected. Yeah, so by we, we set all tool loads. Uh, so if there is a, you know, if the tool does start wearing, it knows to change out to the next sister tool. Um, but yeah, we're confident. We, we get a stable process. Um, that's why at this moment in time, it's not running around the clock. We get the stable process. We set all the parameters of the machine, and then once we're happy, like with the MX330, we just let it go. And, and have you done that cost analysis that you talk about maybe some other solutions costing more money than doing this yourself? Well, is that, is that easy to gauge or measure? Well, I mean, when you look at it, I mean, from my perspective, the tombs that you'll see in here, there's eight tombs, and the material and the subcontract cost of that is probably £8,000, then his own time. So that might be another five, but you're at 13000 You know, I, don't, I wouldn't like to guess how much it would be to tool up you know, eight, nine tombs with zero points or modular vices and things like that. Interesting perspective. Uh, let us know what you think. Do you still believe that modular fixturing is a better way forward than making it yourself? Uh, they're certainly going down the path of making it yourself here at Oracle Precision, but we do know how popular flexible work holding is and how that market is expanding. So it's been a great topic. I, re I really have enjoyed today, Ryan. No, this thank company you. is going places, isn't it? What's your expectation out of this machine in the next couple of years? Uh, I, I think this, will, this type of machine will replace some of us verticals. 
So we'll always keep some of the verticals for doing the fixturing work, doing small, small one-offs, low volume, but the things that run, you know, every month, bi-monthly, it'll end up on this type of machine.